Well, welcome back to our discussion about electricity. Uh, we know that electricity is a form of energy. What we want to talk about is how exactly do electric charges deliver energy. We know that high voltage is dangerous, but what exactly does that mean and why would it be dangerous? These and other questions will be discussed in this video. To be able to answer the question, how electricity is related to energy, we have to first remember that electric charges exert forces on each other, but they do it without touching each other. And the way we try to explain how that could be is we said that electric charges set up electric fields, and it's that electric field that one charge sets up that when you put a second charge in that field, the second charge experiences a force. So those forces act through fields. Now, we saw the same kind of situation before with gravity. Masses also attract each other, and the way they do it is they don't have to be touching each other, but they do it through a gravitational field. So let's do a quick review of this. How does gravity relate to energy? Well, we noticed before that if I were to take a mass and move it up like this, that requires work. But if I let go of the mass at B and let it, it would just fall on its own. So I noticed that it requires work for me to move it upwards. But if I want it to go from B to A, all I have to do is just let go of it. So I noticed that to go from A to B requires work on my part. But for it to go from B to A, I don't have to do any work at all. Gravity does all the work. So I'm going to say A to B requires work. And B to A, we're just going to use the word naturally. It just happens naturally. Now I also can define B as being uphill. And A is downhill. Now we also remember that when I do this work, go from A to B, work is the transfer of energy. And the kind of energy I've given it when I move it from A to B is called potential energy. The amount of energy that it has here is called potential energy. So the other thing that I could say about these two locations, and this will be really important for us, is that B has a high potential energy and A has a low potential energy. And therefore, when I move an object, when I do work to move it from A to B, it has energy that I've given it by doing that work. So we would say that this location, B, has a high potential energy. And we would say that this location, A, has a low potential energy. So an object going from high potential energy to low potential energy requires no work from me. It just happens naturally. But to go from low potential energy to high potential energy, that does require work. We might also notice that this location above the ground has a higher energy associated with it than this location. So moving masses in gravitational fields changes the amount of energy that they have. Super important principle to learn from this. Super important is that moving masses in fields, in this case a gravitational field, causes changes in energy. When I lift masses in gravitational fields, I increase the amount of potential energy that those masses have. That's a really important thing to realize from gravity. So we just said lifting masses in gravitational fields changes the potential energy of the mass. So notice right here, the potential energy of this mass right here is being increased by pulling it up this roller coaster with this chain, so the chain uh, motor thing that's pulling this guy up the hill is increasing the potential energy of this. So work is being done 
by the chain motor to pull a mass up the hill. I can see here's a mass that's farther up the hill, so this has more energy than that does. Because if I move masses in gravitational fields, I will change their energy. Now let's remember, we're talking about electricity, and we know electricity carries energy, but electrical energy is not really what we're interested in. We're interested in electrical energy turning into light energy, or heat energy, or sound energy. So we're really interested in the transformation of electrical energy into other forms of energy. And the same thing is true with roller coasters. I can see right here, here's a mass that work was done to pull it all the way up here. And we just said moving masses in gravitational fields causes changes in energy. So if I drew, Earth's gravitational field would point straight down above the Earth where this roller coaster is built. So what happens is as you move this mass farther up the hill, you are increasing the amount of energy. And then at this point, I can see it has a large amount of potential energy. So a lot more here than it will have, say, when it's right here. Now, we all know why roller coasters are fun. They're fun because you go fast. Well, how do you get to go fast? Well, it does work. Motor does work to pull you up the hill. You have a lot of potential energy here. And here's the key part. That potential energy, which is not what we're that interested in, is transformed into kinetic energy as it goes down. And that's the part that we're interested in. So in electricity, all of these ideas are still present. Moving masses in gravitational fields changes their energy. And we're going to see that moving charges in electric fields changes their energy too. Let's see how that works. Well, let's take our gravity roller coaster ideas and let's apply them to electric charges. So first of all, I've got this big positive charge that's fixed in space and we learned before that there's an electric field made by this charge it's all over here and that electric field goes outwards in every direction so you'll also notice here we've picked two places B and A that are just sitting out in the electric field made by this guy and what we want to ask is which way is uphill Is it going from A to B? Or is it going from B to A? In other words, is going uphill for this test charge going this way? Or would it be going this way? And another way of asking that question is, would I have to do work to move it from A to B? Or would I have to do work to move it from B to A? Does it go naturally from A to B, or does it go naturally from B to A? Whichever one it takes work for me to do, that is the way that's uphill. So which way requires work? Hopefully you realize that because this is a positive charge and that's a positive charge, like charges repel. So I would have to do work to move it from A to B. If I started it at B, it would naturally go to A. It would be repelled. But if I want it to be at B and it's at A, I'm going to have to do work. So I would say that uphill is going from A to B. That's going uphill. And that also leads to my next question then. Which one, A or B, is high potential energy and which one is low potential energy? So I now know if I have to move from A to B, and that takes work on my part. That doesn't happen naturally. If I have to do work, then I must be increasing the potential energy of this charge. So uphill is going to be high potential energy. And downhill, the lower is low potential energy. 
So when this charge goes from B to A, it's going downhill. It goes from high potential energy to low potential energy. When I go from A to B, I have to do work. I go from low potential energy to high potential energy. So this is like the higher part of the roller coaster, and this is like the lower part because like charges repel. So let's try this now with this negative charge. So is uphill... A to B, or B to A. Well, let's try it out. If I take the charge and start it at A, will it naturally go to B, or will I have to do work to make it go to B? Well, my test charge is positive, as all test charges are, and the charge making the electric field is negative. So they are opposite charges, so they attract. So if I start with this test charge here at A, it's going to naturally go to B. So that's actually going to be like downhill. If I want to get it from B to A, I'm going to have to do work. So that's uphill. So B to A is the uphill. So now my other question, though, is going to be, uh, which one's high potential energy and which one's low potential energy? So when I go from A to B, we just said I'm going downhill. When you go from B to A, you're doing work, so that's going uphill. So then I would say now A is going to be the high potential energy location, and B is going to be the low potential energy location. And again, notice what's happening is, and this is kind of the grand finale bottom line statement here, moving the test charge in an electric field changes the energy of the charge. Okay, let's summarize, and then we're going to define one of the most important concepts in all of electricity. The movement of a positive test charge within an electric field is, an, is accompanied by changes in potential energy. That's what we've just been doing. Just like moving masses in a gravitational field changes the mass's potential energy, moving charges in an electric field changes the charge's potential energy. Now we've learned this before. We learned it uh, earlier in the year. Potential energy is the stored energy of position of an object. It is related to the location of an object within a field. Now comes our important definition. The electric potential is the amount of electric potential energy per charge at a particular location in an electric field. The electric potential is the amount of electric potential energy per charge at one location in an electric field. Now the reason why we do the per charge part is because we know that one location in an electric field could have different amounts of energy associated with it depending on how much charge was put there. But if I divide how much energy is at that location by how much charge is there, that number, the electric potential, will be the same for all charges. So in formula form, we would write this. Electric potential is represented with a capital V, and that equals the potential energy of the charge per charge, divided by the charge. So potential energy would be in joules, and charge would be in coulombs. Now, if it were up to me, that is how I would write the formula on our reference tables. But that's not how it's written on our reference tables. How it's actually written on our reference tables is instead of using potential energy, what they write is the electric potential is equal to the work it takes to move a charge in an electric field divided by that amount of charge. So if I was thinking of roller coasters, this potential energy would be how much energy the roller coaster car, if that was its mass, has at the top of the hill. And instead of focusing on potential energy on your reference tables, they focus on the work it took 
to give it that potential energy. The electric potential is the amount of work done to move a charge in an electric field divided by the charge. So really, electric potential is about energy. Now the units of electric potential are super famous. So let's write our formula again. Electric potential is equal to the amount of energy or the amount of work done per charge to put a charge at a particular location in an electric field. So if I had one coulomb of charge at a particular location in an electric field and I know that the potential energy at that point was one joule we would say that the electric potential at that point is one volt. So one volt means an energy of one joule for every coulomb of charge at a particular location in an electric field. Finally, a term that you're going to hear very, very frequently that's very closely related to electric potential is something called an electric potential difference. And what that literally means is if you have electric potential known uh, in two points in an electric field, you literally take the difference between those electric potentials and that would be called the electric potential difference. So to see what this means, let's just remember something we did before. I know it takes work to go from B to A for this test charge because unlike charges attract. So I know that the electric potential, this is high potential for A and this is low potential for B. So let's just make up some numbers. Let's just say that the potential energy per charge at A was 35 volts. And let's just say that the electric potential at B, the amount of energy per charge at B, is 15 volts. Then the electric potential difference, so the difference in potentials, would be 35 volts minus 15 volts. So I would say there is a potential difference of 20 volts in between these two locations. And what that would mean is that there is going to be 20 joules of energy for every coulomb of charge to go from A down to B. So that's uphill, that's downhill. So every coulomb of charge is going to be, its potential energy is going to decrease by 20 joules. And that 20 joules is going to go into some other form of energy. Just like if this was gravity, this is uphill and downhill, that change in energy is going to show up as kinetic energy. Here, this change in energy for the charge might show up as light energy or sound energy. Now, where you see him talk about electric potential difference is like on a battery. So here is one part of the battery, and here's another part. This is at a different potential than this is. So this might be uphill, and that might be downhill, and this might have an energy of, let's say, uh, 24 volts, so 24 joules per coulomb of charge there. And this guy um, is only going to have 15 volts, so it's maybe 15 joules for every charge. And what they do is they write the potential difference between these two terminals right here on the battery. So just as in a roller coaster, this height difference leads to an energy release as the car goes down. In this battery, this is like a height difference, 9 volts. This is high, 9 volts higher than that, and that also leads to an energy release as charges go from one to the other.